All right, hello everyone. Good morning. Well, welcome to this month's training on shelter evacuee and migrant accountability. In today's training, we're going to walk through the workflows for documenting, credentialing, tracking, and the reunification of displaced people at reception locations, family centers, and shelters. Um, during the training, if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or you can use the chat function to send me your question or comment. I'll make sure to provide you guys ample enough time um, during each of the different sections to uh, ask questions. All right, so Salamander, when it comes to evacuee um, collection of data, uh, it, Salamander is utilized throughout the United States for accountability during evacuee and migrant missions and initiatives. Um, together, we help organizations collect information to create unique credentials for displaced inv individuals. Um, we have established two workflows to document the check-in process of these individuals. Um, which workflow you select will be dependent on what your primary foundation is. So is it the event or is it the person's credential and how it is attached to other events that you are um, looking at? If you're only looking at databasing impacted people for a singular event and organization, such as a like a mass victim event, the rapid tag evac solution would be your answer. Um, if you're needing to database everyone, um, those that are impacted as well as those that are related to those that are impacted and the credential be used in multiple events or multiple organizations, credentialing and accountability would best be done in Salamander Live. So we're going to walk through each of these different workflows and we're going to first start off with rapid tag evac. So RapTag Evac is a PC-based solution that allows you to quickly register impacted people by scanning their driver's licenses or other acceptable IDs and then printing them an ID tag, whether that is a wristband. As you can see here, we have all different colors. Um, it could be a three and a half by or a three by five label, or you can print them a hard card on your two by three um, cards. The tag contains an interoperable uh, QR code that can be scanned into the track app um, as well as into command to track their movements, uh, such as uh, let's say they need to get transferred to an alternate location, um, a medical facility or a family center. Um, for long term evacuee support, the track app can also be used to check people in and out of the site for accountability. So on top of registering people, um, rapid tag evac can also uh, track household pets, belongings, and then you can actually link them to their owners to manage that, uni uh, that unification process. When setting up your rapid tag evac station, um, you should have these equipment. So you should have the laptop with the rapid tag evac software installed. So once you have it installed, you can only use rapid tag evac from that one computer. Uh, you should also have a USB scanner, and then you should also have the printer with your printing supplies, um, which could be your labels or your, your wristbands. And of course, um, very important is making sure that um, if you're going to be out and about and you have a mobile laptop, make sure you have a hotspot or a way for your computer to connect to the internet so that you can send all this data that, that, data that you're collecting through Rapid Tag Evac up to Salamander Live so you can view reports. Now, before using Rapid Tag Evac, there's medical information that must be entered into Salamander Live. Uh, medical reference data is basically data that define the set of um, permissible values to be used by data fields within Rapid Tag Evac. Um, reference data uh, will typically be defined by your organization's standard operating uh, procedures and policies. Um, just know that only users with the assigned role incident medical ref can add medical reference data. So this is a role that would be uh, visible to accounts who have, to, who have purchased Rapid Take Evac, and it will automatically be assigned to the main Salamander Live account administrator. Now the main account administrator can then assign that role to any additional users going forward. Actually, I think Earl had so one. So let um, me go through 
um, the next slide here. And I'm, I'm hearing some background noise. Oh, for a second okay. here. All right. Let me just accept these individuals that are coming in here. Give me one second here. All right. Um, since Rapid Take EVAC is a registration based application, um, if you do require um, any tracking of these people, um, you will also need to have a track app on site at the shelter. So the track app is a mobile application that can be downloaded to an Android or iOS, iOS device. Um, once it's installed, you can scan evacuee barcodes or manually move them from the different evacuee base assignments as needed. So let me go through that process of adding medical reference data and then we'll take a look at that rapid take evac workflow so in pull up salamander live here so where we want to go is you want to go into version one of salamander live so um, oh, let me just remove the dot com the slash v2 on there um, oh what is going on here? Go here real quick. So where you want to go is you want to go to version one. So version one um, is where we're going to have the. Um, let's see here. Is this not working? All right, I don't know why it's not working here. App dot salamanderlive dot com. Let me pull up a different website or browser here. Give me one second. So for some reason, I can't pull up version one of this, um, so I apologize on that. Um, I know that we have not um, ended that site yet. We're still moving some data over to our version two site, uh, but to get there, it's app.salamanderlive.com without the V2 at the end, but for some reason, I'm not able to access that at this moment. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to show you that, but here I will um, show you on the PowerPoint presentation. Um, we'll go back here and I'll show you exactly what that would look like, so. It's once you go into Salamander Live version one and you have the correct credentials to get access to the re medical reference data. If you go up to um, you'll have to actually click on one of the actual tabs, so either personnel, equipment or organization. Once you click on that, it will activate the medical reference data that's available in the admin function at the very top right. So when you click on that, you're able to go in and see medical reference data. That's how you know that you have access. Um, first things first is uh, under the medical reference data, it shows the organization. So that's the organization that you are logged in and you're able to click on that to actually change the organization. More than likely, you're not going to change the organ organization unless you are moving your rapid take evac computer around and sharing that with other agencies. In most cases, you're not. So you would leave that as such as your organization. Underneath that, you have the option to add in reference incidents. So reference incidents are basically uh, templates that you can create for your rapid take evac solution. Uh, reason why templates are important is that um, this works well for um, for those agencies that have multiple rapid take evac solutions. So. In this case, you're able to create a incidence. Let's say it's maybe for a tornado or flooding or hurricane. And within those um, events, depending on, on, on the type of incident, uh, you'd be activating certain shelters. And in this case, you would have a rap take evac be sent to those shelters to collect um, 
information on the people that are registering at that shelter. So in this case, you could have different assignments created for those rapid take evac. So rapid take evac station one would maybe be at shelter A to collect all the information from uh, from shelter A. You'd have another rapid take evac solution set up at shelter B and then register those individuals that are checking in at shelter B and so on and so forth. Okay. So in this case, you have um, when you're looking at it from a event perspective in Salamander Lab, you're able to associate who has checked in at shelter A versus shelter B. Um, in rapid take evac, if you don't use medical reference, or sorry, if you don't use reference incidents, the only assignment, this is the default assignment that everybody will be checked into is registered. And when you look at it from um, a event management perspective, you're not going to know who's registered at what. It's just that everybody is registered. So that's how it kind of helps to distinguish um, the different stations that you have set up. Uh, facilities in this case um, is the next one. We don't go through complaint. Complaint is a legacy software. So under facility, um, this is um, regarding the destination field within rapid take evac, but facility um, are any facilities, any destinations um, in which people could be sent to. So this is their final destination. So you can put in their shelters, hospitals, family centers, um, anything that you have that, you're, that you've got as a evacuee type, um, evacuation type um, site. Next on here is gender. You do have to fill out the gender fields. In this case, you can use um, M, F, U. There's three of them, so male, female, and unknown. You can spell it out or you can type it out or, or you can use the um, initials for each. Medical options is not an option. That is, again, for legacy software. Same thing as transport agency. The other ones you have is special needs and triage priorities. So special needs you're able to set up so that you can track those that may need um, special handling or um, need uh, additional um, equipment or supplies. And then same thing with triage priority, you're able to go in there and set up your priority levels. Um, you can use a numbering system or um, description. So we'll take a look at these once we get into salamander or into rapid take evac. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you, Brendan. Did they change that? They must have just changed that and I didn't know. Thank you. So um, here it is. So it used to just be salamalive.com. So now it's V1. So thank you for that, Brennan. I didn't see your, your chat on that. Good to know. I They must have made this change and not let me, main trainer, know this information. <laughs> so let me walk through that again. I apologize. Uh, let me go in here. All right, so like I mentioned earlier, you go, you can click on any of these tabs. So once you log in, you can use your same logins that you're using for Salamander Live version two, okay? Just click on any one of these tabs right here. Once you click on the tab, if you go up to the very top, you should, you should see the admin function, okay? See the admin function here. And then underneath that, you should see medical reference data. Okay, so as I mentioned here, reference incidents, you're able to set up different reference incidents. So there's a bunch of them I have in here. Just know that these all have end dates. Because they have end dates, they're not going to appear within my rapid take evac once I sync um, my rapid take evac with Salamander Live. So the only one that would show up on here is the tornado. So if I wanted to remove these, I could remove the um, the end dates on here and click save. Okay. So that I have a couple different options to show you. So let me just remove these. All right, so there. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna click add on here, name your event, whatever your event is. So if it's a natural disaster, you could put that in. If it's for um, checking in migrants, um, whatever it is that you're looking at, at, at tracking in this case. So we're gonna put, we're just gonna name this as reception. A, B, C. Okay, start date is going to be for today's date. 
click save. There it is, so no end date in there. I'm going to edit, so go back and you're going to edit and then you're going to add your assignments. So your assignments, again, these could be um, particular assignments. So if you have a family uh, center that's opened, you can type that in. If that's where you're going to set up a rapid take evac computer. So I can add in here that we've got a shelter A. Add a shelter B. Maybe we've got a couple different ones. And let's say we also have one set up at the animal shelter. You're checking in animals. Again, you can do whatever you want when it comes to these assignments. OK, so these here are going to be what's going to be available as assignments. So I can when I when I create the event through Rep take evac and I can select one of these as the default assignment. But just know that with the default assignment, if you go into the record itself, you are able to edit and and uh, change the locations for those individuals. OK, so that is the um, reference incidents. Next on here, you've got facilities. So again, you can go in here and add whatever facilities that you want. So any any facilities that you might transport people to. So again, this could be this would be more of a final destination. Now the difference between using the destination or facility list here versus the assignment is that on the report itself, if you um, assign someone to a specific assignment, it will and you are you're able to use the track app to move them from from assignment to assignment. So let's say you've got this person, John Doe, who checked in at reception or uh, shelter A, but his family has checked in at shelter B. In this case, he wants to move from shelter A to shelter B. With the assignment function, you're able to move that person from assignment A to shelter B using that track app versus using the facility list if you if you put that in here um, you won't see that tracking of the movement you'll just see it in the report that he's currently at this assignment which could be let's say um, the community center okay it doesn't show that he was at the actual egan community center before he was moved over to this community center so that's the difference between the two and you'll see that when we go through the rap take um, evac um, solution Add facility, simply click add, type in the name of the facility, and then click save. Simple as that. Gender, this is all stating that you have to put in something in here. So you can type in MFU or type, type in exactly what it is in here. So male, female, unknown. Special needs, you can um, enter whatever it is that you want in here. So just simply click add and then type in the special needs, the code, and the sort order. So um, I highly recommend that you make sure that you put a none in here because as a sort order it's the very first option if you don't then someone's uh, everybody that you check in will have some sort of special need so you want to make sure that you also you also include none as the very first one and then all these will appear as options for you to select okay. and last but not least is triage level so in this case you can use the numbering system you can type in the description um, the black, red, yellow, green, white here is associated to the coloring. So in wrap take evac um, under the triage priority level, um, there is colors associated there. So you want to make sure that you put them in the correct um, color field and make sure you click save. All right, so that is setting up your medical reference data within version one of Salamander Live. Again, to get to Salamander Live version one, make sure you type in app.salamanderlive.com slash v1. All right, so workflow. Let's take a look at the workflow. So five steps. Step one, add, make changes to medical reference data. Step two is to grab the reference data. So I'll show you how to do that within RAPTAKE evac. So you, have, you do have to go in and grab all the external data. Again, if you're changing the external data each time you run an event, you want to make sure you do step two. It's extremely important. Step three is start the event, and then step four, register um, all the individuals, and then step five is use the track app to track their movements at the shelter for on site and off site accountability. So I'm going to pull up Rapid Tag Evac here. 
Here's Rapid Take Evac. Now we're using this um, more than likely um, someone in IT has already set all this up, but there's a file options and in here you should set up um, your server. So it should be app dot and we just changed this. So um, we had sent out communication on this. Uh, this change will happen this Sunday, but you'll want to put in here app dot intertrack server dot com. So we are making this change. So it should be app dot intertrackserver.com. So it should be this right here, intertracksserver.com. Everything else is still the same. The path is still intertrack server and you still want to use HTTPS. So that's a big change, that, change that's coming to wrap tag evac and command. With rapid tag, if you're on version five, you don't have to worry about that. That's all hard coded on the back end. So make sure you make this change um, by mon Monday of next week. If you have wrap take evac. Okay, your organization should all be already be sent in here or uh, put in here. Um, this should match up exactly to Salivar Live. Make sure you have a scanner set up. Should be a USB scanner. This comes with a kit. This is allows you to scan in those driver's license or state IDs, and then you can set up printing. So whatever kind of um, design you're looking at at printing from here. Okay. And then go ahead and click save, and then you're ready to uh, start going in and grabbing reference data. So how do you grab reference data? So before you start the event, I always recommend you do this first, is go to actions and then get external data. Okay, so this is going up to Salamander Live. You'll see it changing down at the bottom here. It's grabbing all that reference data that you've entered in in Salamander Live version one, and it'll make it available within Rapid Tag. Once you've done that, then you can click start. Once you click start and name your event. So we training. Down at the bottom here, you can look at your external incidents. So any templates that you created. So these are those reference incidents. So you can see in here, I've got a couple of them there. There's that reception ABC one I created. There's evacuation, flood, tornado. Again, these are just templates I've created that allows me to select and pick the different types of um, assignments I want to use for this particular rapid tag evac computer. Okay, I'm going to choose my reception ABC one I, I created and then I can go in here and choose my default assignment. So my rapid tag computer, let's say it's this is going to be set up at the family center. I may have another rapid tag evac computer that's set up at shelter A, another one at shelter B and another one that might be set up at a animal shelter that's tracking all the animals that are coming in. Again, it's really up to you and on, on, on where, where you want to set these up. So I've got Family Center, click OK, and now you can start scanning in your resources. So I don't have a, I don't want to scan in my driver's license. It's going to pull up too much personal information. So I'm going to manually add in people. But in this case, if you have your, your USB scanner plugged in, you could basically scan in that person's driver's license. So on the back, there's uh, barcodes that you can that you can scan. Depending on what's embedded in that barcode on those driver's licenses, it'll pull out the information. So you'll see in here, first person that you um, enter in here is going to be head of family. So this is going to be extremely important when you're onboarding a family, is making sure that you register the head of household first. Okay. So in here, uh, for the information, you got first name, last name, so you can put in their first name, their last name. If they've got a middle name, you can enter that in if you want to if you want to put that in there. OK, class, so you can choose from your drop down. Gender, because we filled that in in Salem Live version one, it's available here. Date of birth, if you want to collect that information. C nine eighty address information is what we recommend. If you'll see here, it's not required, but we recommend you put in some sort of contact or address information. Again, if you don't have address information, 
you don't have to enter that in, but we do recommend you put something in there for line two, like a phone number or WhatsApp number. Um, you can use email, uh, just know that the at symbol, because in line two doesn't accept at symbols. Um, so you'll have to type in AT for at. Okay. So phone number. City, if you have a city in there, you can put that in there. If you don't, if you don't, and they're, you know, um, from a different country, you don't have to put that information in there. You can put in the country under the city name if you'd like. Tracking on here, you'll see that an ID number is automatically created for this individual. So this ID number is what's going to print off on the ID tag. Priority. You'll see here's the coloring. So you'll see that by default, uninjured is selected. That's the default, but you can select any of these from the drop down depending on that individual you're checking in. This destination is matching up with that facility field within version one of Salamander Live. You can see all these different options in here. Again, the destination is different than the actual assignment itself. So um, they could be going to the family center. This is where they checked in, but their final destination could be somewhere else. You could put that in there. Just know that the destination, if you change that, it does not track any changes for destination. So if you choose community center and then you change it later to Egan Community Center, it's just going to show Egan Community Center in your reports. This, however, does change. So it shows um, the changes in here. Again, once you've saved this, you can only make the changes for the assignment through um, any of our tracking applications. Okay. Next, miscellaneous information, if you want to collect any of that, and then you've got family. So here we've got the head of household in here. If you want to add in um, other family members, simply click Add New. So you can add in this information, a birthday if you want to. Here's um, information. So you can put guarding information. Next sign here, where this person is going. Family center, is, is this person injured, uninjured? And then now you've got their family member in there. If you want to add a pet, feel free to add a pet as well. Ido. So obviously white dog. So I like for last name, um, just putting what color is the animal and what type of animal it is. So if it's a bird, cat, I don't know, a ferret. And then you can put the phone number, guardian information, and next where this one is going so they were checked in at the family center but maybe they got to get um, transported over to an animal center since the family center doesn't allow pets and going to family and there you've got your three people once you're done you can click finish okay so you'll see there's a print when finish option there's a checkbox on there you'll so this is automatically so i'm going to click finish and I can have my option of print. So I can choose to print just the, the uh, head of household, or you can choose to print in ID tag for every single person, which is what we're gonna do on here. So we're going to print. Mine is printing PDF, so you can see a sample of what that would look like. So let me pull up the design. So here it is. Here's the ID tag. So this is the wristband. So you'll see in here, there's two barcodes on here. It's the same barcode. One's a QR code, one's linear. Uh, basically the same thing. So you'll see in here their name, their ID number, and then their priority level. So then this barcode can be scanned into the track app to track that person as they're going in and out of an event or in and out of the shelter or the site, okay? So that works great for maybe if it's a uh, volunteer type evacuation 
or let's say that the site itself, they are free to move in and out of that site, but you want to track as as they do those different movements, their activities. So in this case, you know, you want to make sure that you use that track app to um, to track that. We'll show you that in a little bit here. Um, other things I want to show you on here, um, make sure that you click send. So unlike rapid tag, there is no auto send on here. So every time that you um, complete a registration, we recommend you click send to send this data up to Salamander Live. It's extremely important. Nothing is saved locally on this computer. So if you don't click send and you actually accidentally click end and end in this event, you would lose all that data. So that is extremely important. Put that in your SOP to make sure that whoever is using this knows that they click send every single time. I'm going to register another person. Let's say this is the father, but he registered later. So this is the family that registered first. So I'm going to put in here. Um, so let's say he is senior. Date of birth, you put the address in there again. Next, tracking information. Okay. Family center. If there's any special needs, here they are. And then once we're in here, we can click finish and print them off an ID. Okay. So in this case, he had entered, he actually uh, checked in later, but they're actually one family. So how do you connect them as a family? It's very easy to do so. So you have your option. You can go, you, you want to go to the main one. So Olga in this case, if you go to her record, you click edit. I can go to family and I can search for her husband and add her husband to this family. So in this case, in this case, I'm going to go to the family side. I'm going to click on search and you're search by first name or last name. So I'm going to search by last name. There he is, the adult. I'm going to click add and it's going to now link him to this family. You see that? Now he's part of this family. So when I look at the reports, it's going to show that these three people are part of Olga Andich's family with ID number ending in 674. In the case if there's multiple people with the same names. Okay, so no need to print because this is just an edit that you made on the record. This is also how you can go in and edit people's individual um, information as well if you need to. Okay. So that's how you use rapid tag evac. Make sure if you make this change, you click send. So and again, after any change that you make, click send. If you need to reprint an ID tag, simply click on that person and then click print. Easy as that. Or if you need to edit their records, click edit. You'll see if, if they're part of a family, it'll show you on the family side that they're part of family. So I'm going to pull up my, my track app so you can see all this movement being done on the track app. Let me um, link this up. Give me a second. Okay. So here's my track app. You'll see I've got my back week training. Here it is. Okay. And you'll see the reception ABC is not going to show up on here. That's just telling you what template you used for this event. So right here we've got four checked in. You'll see that it matches up with what we have in here. So in this case, I can tap join. If I had other Rapitate evac computers set up, it would show them at their all their different locations. Okay, so you would see family center, you'd see a shelter A, shelter B, et cetera. Okay. So in this case, if you're moving one from one shelter to another, super simple in this case. So I'm gonna just add in that assignment. So there's a shelter A in there. Um, 
Let's see if I have a shelter. I don't. Okay, so let me just move someone. Let me move um, Olga. So simply tap their picture, tap the move icon. So I'm going to shelter A. Okay, so this person has checked out at the family center. Again, if you want to create an assignment called checked out, feel free to do so. As they get to the shelter, the, the uh, new shelter, that's when they can get checked in. So it's going to show that they are no longer there. They're in transport. They're somewhere. They're not at shelter A yet. So maybe it takes, you know, 30 minutes for them to get from one shelter to another, one center to another center. Um, so you can check them out. You can create a checked out assignment, move them to that checked out assignment. And then when they get to that, their, their actual location, they can get their, their wristband scanned in to show that they've been moved. So very simple to do. So I'm going to pull up the barcodes in this case. You can see I'm going to, I'm going to do the child in this case. Okay. So simply their shelter A in this case. So um, I'll I'll create a checked out assignment in here. So I'm gonna tap on the checked out. So these are people that are leaving the building. I can scan his ID. Now he's been moved to checked out. Okay, so he's no longer at the family center anymore. He's checked out. Later, maybe 30 minutes, an hour later, he gets to family shelter or to the uh, shelter A. In this case, whoever is there, they would take their track app and they could scan these people in. Okay, so all they're going to do is tap the scan button and now they're going to scan him in so that he's now checked into shelter A. So if I go to his record or his profile, I can tap on his name. That will show me his movements. You see in here, he was checked in at the family center. That's where he was originally um, registered at. And then he checked out because his family was at shelter A. So that's where he's moving to. So show when he checked out and then when he checked in at that new shelter. So that's the tracking that you're going to get. You're not going to see that if you use rapid tag with that um, destination field. Okay, So with this destination field, you're not going to see that with this. Okay. That's why it's it's you know if you're looking truly tracking for accountability and making sure that you're tracking as people are moving in and out of that building, um, having a track app at those at those locations is going to be extremely beneficial so that you have all the correct data and all the different movements. And these of course are all available within the reports within Salamander Live. So I pulled if I pull up Salamander Live in this case, I go in here to my event. I can see my reports. So here's my event. It's my evacuee training. And then anything that says patient slash evacuee or just patient are going to be all yours that are related to rapid tag evac. Okay. So here's a contact information. This is that report that's going to show you all that information as well as who's related to who. So I can make this nice and big. So here it is. See the ID numbers. You can change these two numbers. So you can show that they are part of her family. See the ID. Address, even address line two. That's why having that phone number is important or email or some sort of contact information, their birth date, if entered in, it'll also calculate their age, their current assignment, okay, and then their destination. And then activity. So this is going to be their current assignment. If you want to see the tracking of their assignment, it's a different report, okay? So there is a separate report if you want to see all their movements, you want to go to the report and there's one called patient activity by assignment. Okay, or you can look at patient activity. So there's a PDF report. There's a um, Excel report. You see in this case. 
So there she is, there's her movements. So that's what you're gonna see. So difference between that one and by assignment, if you do it by assignment. So you see on here? So this is by assignment report. So that's the difference between the two. This just goes by assignment where they're currently at, but it doesn't put them in order. It goes by time. So that's why I like the patient activity because it goes by the person and it puts all their different movements on here versus by the assignment. That's the difference between the two. Okay. So that is rapid take evac in that process. This is where you can get all the data for reunification if needed. Any questions on rapid take evac? Check the comments. All right, no questions. All right, we'll continue with our PowerPoint and look at our next workflow. So the Salomon Live workflow. So Salomon Live um, is our main tool used to manage account data, such as organizations, people in inventory. This is where you're going to go in and print all your ID tags and manage and report on event activity. Okay, so again, this is just your plain old Salamander Live. Um, just know that uh, as of today, we have two different types of Salamander Live accounts. We have a responder based account, which most of you, um, or actually all of you, would have and then we also have a civilian based account okay so we have been working on organization delineation for quite some time i don't know how long it's been but uh, we've been trying to make it so that um, the system recognizes civilian type accounts or records versus responder uh, the civilian account does require a separate Salomon Live subscription from your responder account, um, and the civilian account is so should be solely used for capturing civilian information. Now, when you go into Salomon Live, and I'll, I'll show you this when we get into a civilian account, is that everything looks the same. Um, when it comes to fields and, and all that such, so there hasn't been much change in, in that case. Um, but in the case, we are making some updates to this so that they are recognized as true civilian records. So let's take a look at that workflow and then we'll take you into a civilian account. So there's three steps in working with a Salomon Alive civilian account. Step one, um, first and foremost, is the information collection and credentialing. Okay, so at reception locations and shelters, um, you wanna register those individuals, create them an ID, um, using that civilian account. Uh, when registering people, you want to capture information such as, um, you know, any of their basic identification contact information. So name, um, uh, phone number, address. Um, you can also capture their country of origin, their mode and date of arrival. Um, if you want to track, you know, which shelter that they're at, you know, what room number, what bed assignment, if that's what you're looking at tracking. And then you also have data departure and transfer. So there's a lot more information in here compared to rapid tag evac, because again, you're using, uh, you have the capability to, to custom create some of these fields within Salamander Live. Um, step two is to track that um, on-site, off-site accountability at each shelter. So using the, again, the tracking applications like the track app, you can capture the completion of the workflow, such as, you know, their medical checks. You can uh, track, you know, um, room and shelter assignments and any other changes that's been made by scanning that credential. So that's going to provide you that real time visibility um, for accurate shelter totals, um, enabling you to um, know what resources you have available um, for um, uh, planning and distribution. Uh, step three is equipment accountability. So you can use the inventory app um, to account for the issuance and return of shelter assets, such as like cots, meals, clothes, et cetera. Um, the exchange of all equipment and supplies, they're basically all documented and reported at any time within Salomon Live. Since your inventory app is connected to Salomon Live, um, all that data is sent up 
and so you're able to review that for your reports. So let's take a look at Salamander Live here. Let me minimize that, pull up Salamander Live. We're going to log out of here and go into our civilian account. So here's my civilian account. I apologize. Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> Sorry, I have a slight cold and so I've been blowing my nose and I forgot to unmute myself. I apologize. So. I'm sorry about that. So um, where did I leave off? I was on the home side here. I apologize. So on the home side, you've got um, your your same tiles as as you have on the responder type account. So recent people, so people you've added in the system, whether through manual add or import, um, any recent communications, qualifications notice, and credentials notice. You'll see up at the top here. We also have the event list, which is hidden. Alert list. You don't need to add. You're not going to have inventory related to your civilian account. Okay. So how this would work is that if you're using Salamander Live to register people, you would have your, your computer there, so your laptop with your card printer on site. Okay, so you'd have all that set up and um, so that it's allowing you to print out your, your hard tags for these individuals. So simply click on quick add and then add people. But like I said before, before you even do any of that, there's some setup that you have to do in the system before, um, before you start registering people. So it's different, a little bit different than on the people side because you want to have all the setup first before you start, before you start registering people in because this is more of a real time registration versus I can go in there and make the changes I need to because I'm importing my people in there. OK, so first things first is settings is your cust is going in and adding in your custom uh, fields. So this custom field um, area, we've just uh, re released this not too long ago. So you do have to be a account administrator at the parent level level in order to add custom fields and even see this settings option. OK, so if you log in and you don't see the settings, it's probably because you're not set up as an administrator at the parent level. So to add custom fields, it's really simple. Click the pencil icon, and then you can add up to 10. Okay, So this will appear for every uh, person that's logged in to their civilian account, Okay, to your civilian account. They'll have access to this. So in this case, you can type in that the, the field that you want, how you want it to appear, and then whether it's required and whether you want it to show. So you don't have to put required in this case, but if you want it to appear within the form, make sure you put show. If you don't, it's not going to appear there at all. So again, put your information in here, country of origin, et cetera, et cetera, and then click save. Other things that you want to do in here is to go into qualifications and training. Okay. So again, you could put this underneath the, um, like this, account area under the custom area, but if you wanted this to be printable on the ID tag um, right now, um, we 
the uh, custom fields aren't something that you can actually print yet on the ID tags, or we're still working on that. But in this case, if you wanted to add in, let's say, um, where did I put this? I did print local. Yes, put under local. So in this case, you're able to add in um, current shelter, how they arrived, if they were transferred to all this information in here. Okay. So in this case, current shelters, I just put in, you know, a couple of them in here. To add these folders, simply just click create folder, name your folder and then save it. Okay. To add a qualification, in this case, we're, our qualification is just shelters. Just right click and click on new qualification. When you do that, it's going to require a code, a description, and a kind. So the code's what prints on the back of the ID tag. So that's what I recommend you put something that can be easily, um, if they looked physically looked at the card, they would be able to tell this information. So, you know, where they're currently sheltered at, how they arrived, and where they're supposed to be transferred to. Mode arrival, you have your options in here. So I can edit this one. So it's like the other. So, so mode of arrival, air, and, you know, descriptions, airplane from other destination. Okay. So you have your options there. You can put whatever you want in here. If they bust in and they bust in from a, a specific state, you can put that in there. Transferred to, if they were transferred to the state, transferred to a specific, you know, location, you can put that information here as well, too. So here's an ex example. So those are things that you want to do. So the settings for the custom fields and your qualifications and training section to add in whatever information you want printed on the back of the ID tag where the qualifications would normally uh, print for a responder ID. Okay. Once you have that, then you can go in here. You can start um, adding in your people. Okay. So in here, simply uh, click quick add function people. It's going to pull up the form and then go there and you can add in your individual. So the ID number, I wouldn't change that. So status, you know, again, you have your status in this case. You just leave it as in this case, if you want to put in here, as everybody's going to put in here, no matter what, it's going to be by default active. So if they're inactive, you know, again, you can choose whatever you want in here. Let's put in here inactive. These are civilians. So organization, I have two of them set up in here. Again, the civilian um, account, this is going to go by your organization name, and behind it would be civilian. You can choose to go in the organization field and create other agents, you know, other organization names, you know, especially, especially if it's a, and, you know, related to that incident, you can name it as such. It's like, for example, I created one in here for um, ABC reception. Person type, again, if you want to fill that in, you know all these are going to be under civilian anyway, so you don't have to fill this in. It's up to you. And then the person's name, so we'll just use the same as we did before. If the person has uh, two last names, add both into the single last name field. Okay, middle name, there's a suffix, their birth date. Now, because this is the, um, we're registering the head of household first, just skip the add association section. You'll come back to this when you add in, it's when, when you start adding in their family members. Employment area um, in here. Um, if you um, want to add in um, any information, feel free to do so. There's really not much in here. The only thing is they have a driver's license. You can put their driver's license information in here. Um, any notes you can put in here. So again, a lot of this information we've collected on the custom side, or you can choose to put it on the notes. So the notes section, you could put their destination, if they're um, like immigration court dates um, or the, the court locations. Um, if they have any immigration court data and location updates, you can choose to put that all in here. Okay. So again, you can use this note section for anything. Location and contact information. We recommend you, you um, if they have one, put in their email address. 
Okay, if they have a phone number, put their phone number in there, even if it's a international number. If they have a WhatsApp number, uh, I know that internationally they use WhatsApp. Um, so again, you collect all that information in here. Okay, it's Olga at gmail.com. It's her mobile number, okay. international number. Medical information. On the medical information, I'd recommend just um, if you want to put their gender in here, but recommend you scroll all the way down in here and put their emergency contact information, which is very important. So, um, what I would do in here is because the phone number in this case doesn't, you know, it's not going to accept international numbers. Um, um, so, you can put in who their contact is. And then you can put a phone number right here if you want. Whatever that phone number is. And then you've got your custom. Oops, I forgot the contact. Uh, There you go. And then custom information. So since none of them were required, they're not in red. But if you have this information, you need to enter that in. So what's their country of origin? Okay, what room assignment they in? So room um, 13, bed number two, city ID number if they have one, date of intake, um, and then their destination if you want to fill that in. Okay, so if they're going to the Family Center, and then click Save. Once you click Save, just like a responder record, it takes you into the person's profile. If you want to upload a picture, you want to take a picture. So this is where you want to have your external camera set up so you can take a picture of the person. We'll just add one in here just so we have someone in here. Um, so take their picture, edit that, save it. And that's what's going to print off in their ID tag. OK. And then down at the bottom is under the qualification and training. This is where you can add in. That local folder, so their current shelter, the mode of travel and transfer to. So they're currently at the Johnson Center. Their mode of travel, they airplane from a different destination. If they were transferred to state, you could put that information in there. OK, so that's what's going to print off on the back of the ID. Once you're done with this, simply click print. So you can print the person an ID tag. The ID design that we have in here that we're using is a civilian. The civilian one is uh, the private, so private industry. So that's one that we're using. So put issue date in here and then just simply click print. So civilian, here it is. I'll pull up the ID so you can see what that looks like. So again, I just put this as the organization. Again, you could put whatever you want in here. If you don't, it's going to be very blank um, in this case. So here's the other civilian ID. So there's an issue date, expired date. This one's off because of my organization photo on here. Because um, there, there's an issue date that goes right there. So in this case, if, if I didn't have take a picture, I didn't put a, a logo or anything in here, it would just be like this. If I choose to not put a logo, which you probably don't need to because this again, you're you're entering in civilians, you don't there's just gonna be a blank white spot right there. But on here you'll see in the back of the ID, it's you know, it's you're gonna see in there that their air and then their shelter at MC, Moosewood Center. Same thing on this one here. So medical barcode and then this QR code that can be scanned in through any of our tracking applications. So that's the difference between the two. So if I go back to my track app, there's my track app. 
So the important thing when you're looking at using this as of today is that we we don't have the civilian um, IDs set up yet. So this ID that you're printing off is still recognized as a responder ID. So as of today, if you do have a civilian account, you do want to set up two separate events, one to track your all your civilians, so all your evacuees, migrants, uh, patients, and then a separate event to track all your responders. So that's what we recommend as of today. The release for the civilian um, features is coming out, I want to say in the next month. We actually have QA in, in, a, in next week, I think, um, to um, test all that out. But today I'll show you kind of what's coming so you can see that information. So let me pull this over. So this is what's coming. So you're going to see um, once you have a civilian account and you create those ID tags, you are able to scan them into your responder event. So on your actual responder account, we are managing all your workers. So everyone that's working in that event, as well as all the, um, the evacuees, migrants that's getting checked in. You'll see there is going to be a fifth icon that's going to show for civilians. So that will be in your chart. Okay. And then from here, you're able to click on it, just like how you're able to click on your responders or equipment collections to click on the actual civilian icon. It'll show you who the civilians are, their organization, their name. You're able to pull a report on them. So that's the same individual report. Next on that is within the actual um, assignment details. You'll see in there there is an actual section for civilians. So it'll list all the civilians that's been checked into that specific assignment. So if you got these people that are working shelter A and these are the civilians that's been registered and checked into shelter A, you'll see the differences between who's whom. And then on the roster tile, they're also listed here as well. So roster is going to include everybody. So responder as well as civilians. So you'll see the vertical type in here, R for responder and then C for civilian. So show who's who, where they're, you know, where they're currently at, their last check-in. And then resource timer, same thing. We've added the vertical type field in here, column in here to associate who's a responder versus who's a civilian. So this is all coming soon. So again, in the next, I want to say in the next month is when we will receive this, uh, or we'll we'll have this released, um, and then we'll I'll be doing another training again to showcase all that once it's up and running again. Uh, Nate, yes, absolutely. I have this recorded. I have last week's record as well too. So um, I'll post one of them up in. Um, on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Um, I don't know when it'll be up in Salamander Live in in the university, but um, if you want to um, put your email down here, I will send this um, directly to you once I get the link and everything's up and posted. But other than that, um, you know, you can start utilizing the civilian count just as how you use it on the responder side and manage it, scan those barcodes the same as you would um, with a responder. Just make sure you have two separate incidents as of today to track your responders versus your civilians so they don't get meshed together because that's the last thing you want to do. And that's the reason why we are going to be creating and associating the differences between the different ID tags out there. So that's coming soon. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nate. I appreciate it. I will make sure to send um, the link to you. All right. Anybody else have any questions? I apologize. It took over a little bit, four minutes on here. That's my fault in the beginning because I spent too much time on the version one piece. <laughs> so any questions for me? No questions. All right. Well, thank you guys all so much for being a part of today's call. If there's anybody else that wants um, today's recording or last week's recording, I'll, I'll send out the best one. Um, just let me know. Here's my contact information on the screen here. So just email me at training at salamalive.com and I will send you the link. Nate, I've got your email, so I'll make sure to send that to you. For everybody else, um, if you want to send me an email, just let me know that you want the video, and I will send it over to you. 
All right, everyone. Thank you all so much for your time. I really appreciate it. See you guys all next month.